All right, guys, moving on to systems of equations word problems. Just a quick moment here of review. What the heck is a system of equations? Since we haven't done a whole lot with them in class yet, you guys are getting all the instruction done ahead of time. So how do I solve a system of equations again? Well, I use either graphing, substitution, or elimination. And I had changed my pointer tool. I like the green arrow. All right. So just a quick review, I don't actually want to solve these. I want us to acknowledge what we're going to have to do to solve them. What we have to do to solve them. So look at the first one here. Not ready for elimination because if I add it, I get negative 7x and I get 3y. So remember the point of elimination is making a variable go away. So I would need to do something to these equations. In fact, probably the most efficient manner of being able to solve this would be to take this first equation and multiply it by negative 2. Why do I want to do that? I'm sure someone hollered it out, but sadly I can't hear you um, from here because, you know, it's not possible. I tried to make a joke and it completely fell flat. Moving on. All right, so you, you'd, you'd have to multiply because the negative 2 times the y would give you negative 2y and then our y's would cancel. Another idea, guys, is that if you've got 1x, you could solve for x and make this x equals negative 3y minus 9 by subtracting that 3y from each side. Then you could substitute that in for the other x. Um, and then this one here, I want to point out that graph baby graph. You're going to graph this, and I'm going to show you next class how to do a little trick on your calculator to be able to graph that. Okay, so make sure you ask me. Let's get started on some word problems. All right, before we start this particular one at the top of the page, I want you to look carefully at what I've given you here for the steps. Number one, define the variables, and I mean write it down, guys. That means write down x equals and what it represents in words, y equals what it represents in words. You will be much more thankful if you write it down than if you choose not to, you'll be lost because you're going to have a hard time remembering what you made each variable. All right? Write the equations. Look for two different relationships between the variables. And there will be two different relationships in each problem. Choose a method and solve. Now, most of the time, most, most, most of the time, your method is going to be elimination. Because the numbers are not going to be very happy for us to use substitution. And, 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 and only sometimes will you be um, writing equations that you can graph. Um, that's only going to happen sometimes. Having said that, only three of the equations we're going to be solving actually um, are, 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 are best for elimination. One of them actually does turn out to be good for substitution. But let's start with talking about Terry here. Terry has a pocket full of quarters and dimes. He has 38 coins total, amounting to $6.80. How, how many of each coin does Harry, excuse me, Terry have? Tried to change his name halfway through the problem there, didn't I? Well... You're going to see a lot of these questions. Why exactly can't Terry just empty out his pockets and count his darn coins? Well, because it's math, and sometimes you have to figure it out on paper. So we're going to start by defining variables. So let's start by defining x as the number of quarters. You can use variables that match the um, words in the problem, but I still expect to see you write them down like I'm doing here. Y is going to be the number of dimes. So now I look for two relationships between my variables. I know that I have a total of 38 coins. So I know that the number of quarters I have plus the number of dimes I have has to equal 38. So there's our first relationship. There's our first equation. Now they don't tell us this, but we already know that a quarter is worth 25 cents. Wait a minute. Apparently I don't know how money works. Let's try that again. 25 cents. And a dime is worth 10 cents. And we know that we have a total of $6.80 in Terry's pocket. So we can write an equation that represents the value of our two variables, or, um, of, of, of the money that we've got here. The value of the number of quarters I have is 25 cents times the number of quarters. And the value of the dimes I have is 10 cents times the number of dimes. And so there you go, I now have my two equations. Now this is going to be one where we're going to use elimination. Now let's think simple here. First of all, I want to make the decimals go away in the second equation. So I'm going to multiply everything in that second equation by 100. And that is going to leave me with 25x 
plus 10y equals 680. And it got rid of my decimals for me, and so I'm much happier now. But I have x and 25x, y and 10y. And so I need to figure out a way to set this up for elimination. I'm going to multiply that top equation, and I'm going to eliminate y. I'm going to get rid of the y. And so I'm going to eliminate y by multiplying it by negative 10. So let me go ahead and do that. Negative 10x is my first term, minus 10y, second term, and negative 380 on the other side. So I am going to use elimination because now I can cancel the y's. I have negative 10 plus 25 is 15x equals 300 when I add negative 380 and 680. And when I divide by 15, I'm going to get x equals 20. And I, that means I have 20 quarters. But now i got to go back and find the number of dimes as well. How do I find the number of dimes? Well, plug it in. Or read the problem again and think logically. I have 38 coins total. If I have 20 quarters, I must have 18 dimes. Now, I am thrilled if you can find that without writing a system of equations. Please write the system of equations anyway. If you don't do the work that you see here in order to get the answer, that's fine. But I still want to see the system that gets you to that answer. <coughs> because we're being challenged to both solve these problems and be able to write the equations for them. All right, moving on. I only gave you a few word problems in this because they take a while. Two small pitchers and one large pitcher can hold eight cups of water. One large pitcher minus one small pitcher constitutes two cups of water. How many cups of water can each pitcher hold? Let's start with our variables. So X is going to be the amount of water, I'm going to write H2O because I'm lazy, in a large pitcher. You know what? Hold on. Let's do something here. LeCompte's going to make life easy. X, I'm going to make it black so it's easier to see. X is the amount of water in there, and Y is the amount of water in there. And this indeed is the large, and this indeed is the small. All right, so two small pitchers, so two Y, and one large pitcher, one X, holds eight cups of water. One large minus one small, so one large minus one small constitutes two cups of water. So now I have my two equations. Now this one is not set up for elimination either. However, I can very quickly set it up for elimination in one of two ways. I could multiply the bottom equation by negative one, or I could multiply the bottom equation by positive two. Either way, I'll eliminate. If I multiply by positive 2, I will eliminate the y's. If I was to multiply by negative 1, I would be eliminating the x's. So I'm going to keep what I have written down here, mainly because I've already written it down, and I just want to keep on going. If you did it the other way, that's fine too. So 2x minus 2y equals 2 times 2. Don't forget to multiply that right-hand side, okay? Add straight down. The y's are going to cancel. 3x equals 12, so x equals 4. The large pitcher holds 4 cups of water. Now I need to go, or liquid, I guess, water, liquid, I guess any liquid, really. Um, so 4 cups of, um, uh, what's a gross liquid you children like? Mountain Dew, maybe? Ugh, disgusting. Rot your teeth every sip. Okay, so let's plug it in. 4 minus y equals 2, or I could use... 4 plus 2y equals 8. Either way, you can see now that our answer for y is going to be 2 when I solve the equation, and the small pitcher holds 2 cups of water. Next question. A test has 20 questions worth 100 points. The test consists of true-false questions worth 3 points each and multiple-choice questions worth 11 points each. How many multiple-choice questions are on the test? Again, couldn't I just take the test and count them? No, it's word problem land. We have to do what they tell us to do. So we're going to start by defining our variables. X for me is going to represent the number of true-false questions. Y is going to represent the number of multiple-choice questions. 
I have a total of 20 questions. There's your first relationship. And you often find that one of the relationships is a number of items relationship. And that the other one is a value of the item. See, in the coin problem, it was the value, the dollar amount value. And in this problem, the value is the point value. Your true-false questions are worth three points apiece. And the multiple choice are worth a weird and confusing 11 points apiece. Okay, whatever. That's weird, but we can still do it. All right, and once again, we are not set up for substitution or elimination. There's two ways to use elimination here. What are they? Well, I can multiply the entire first equation by negative 3. Let's do that. Which would give me negative 3x minus 3y equals negative 60. My other choice would have been to multiply the entire equation by another negative number. Can you figure out what? It would be by negative 11. It would be negative 11. That way we'd have a negative 11y to cancel with the y's. But let's do the x's. Negative 3y and 11y is 8y. Negative 60 and 100 is 40. Divide both sides by 8. y equals 5. So there are only five multiple choice questions on this test. Weird. Sounds like a weird test. All right, now go back. Go back to the information and the problem. How do I find the rest? Well, we can do, again, we can use our equations traditionally, plug in a y of 5, or I can remember, well, there were 20 total questions. So if there's five multiple choice, there have to be 15 true-false. And we found our answer. One more question, and then a quick trip through what IXL offers you for this particular skill. Margie is responsible for buying a week's supply of food and medication for the dogs and cats at a local shelter. The food and medication for each dog twice, twice, costs twice as much as those supplies for a cat. Apparently dogs are more expensive. She needs to feed 164 cats and 24 dogs, and her budget is $4,240. How much can Margie spend on each dog for food and medication? Okay, so we know that we are finding x and y, the cost for each animal. We're going to make x the cost for a dog and y the cost for a cat. Well, we know that the amount for a dog costs twice as much as the amount for a cat. So that's my first equation. This is the one that's set up for substitution. We need to feed 164 cats and 24 dogs. And the total amount of money we've got is 4,240. I know that seems daunting to write, but look, it's the same format each time. The numbers just sort of fit together like a puzzle. I'm going to use substitution here. And I'm going to use substitution by plugging 2y in the place of x. Because if the two values are equal, one can replace the other. Let's solve. 24 times 2 is 48y plus 164y. And I'm not going to lie to you, I have my calculator right here to speed up the process. When you add that together, you get 212y equals 4,240. We're going to divide by 212. and I get 20. It costs 20 bucks a cat. Now, that's not what they want. They want how much it costs per dog. So X is the amount per dog, two times our value for a cat, which is Y, which is 20, and it costs $40 per dog. All right, so for systems of equations, you're going to be looking at topic U, topic U, and you can definitely try this one a little. You can solve by graphing. You can solve by graphing with a word problem. Finding the number of solutions is an excellent set of questions to work on. Same thing here. Classify a system. Classify a system. These are all excellent. All the way down until we get to this stuff about matrices. 
You are not going to have to worry about the ones that involve matrices. We do not learn that. So skip those two. Am I saying do every single one of these all the way down? Well, frankly, folks, do you want to be the most successful you can? Then yes, that's what I'm saying. In all, in, in, in reality here, you have to realize that some of us need a lot of practice. So yes, you should be going in and practicing a little bit of everything. And if you're not lately, that could be why you might be struggling. So take the time to do it. See you guys in class.